A very good evening once again and a very warm welcome to ROTV News with me, Ethan Tashabia. Economic development analysts said that the establishment of Rwanda Finance Limited, a corporation owned by the government of Rwanda, whose primary responsibility is to develop and promote uh, Rwanda as a business and financial center of excellence, will be key in fostering cross-border trade and investment. We have more. Rwanda Finance Limited a company owned by the government of Rwanda, whose primary responsibility is to develop and promote what is known as Kigali International Financial Center. Such corporations in different countries where they exist are taxed to promote cross-border trade and investment and advocate for services to suit the needs of global investors, as explained by Shazad Nudadi, a Mauritian investor in Rwanda. Mauritius had three main, pi three main classic pillars of the economy. We have the sugar, tech, sugar sector, industrial sector, and the manuf manufacturing sector, whereas government can benefit from more revenue. Also, the government can have a better pool of human resource, more qualified human resource. And the last uh, main reason, there are other reasons, of course, is it, it helps in, cre in minim reducing the deficit in the balance of trade of the economy. So these are the four main reasons why Mauritius set up the offshore sector some 20 or 30 years back. Mauritius ranks among the 20 best places to do business worldwide, according to the latest World Bank Ease of Doing Business Report 2020, issued on 24th October 2019. The country remains first in Africa. Dr. Hafashimana Emanuel, an economics professor, explains the relevance of Rwanda Finance Limited in relation to Rwanda's vision. For any foreign investor to bring their money in the country requires a number of things. Rwanda is among three countries in Africa whose economy has been growing at an average rate of 8% for the last 12 years. The country is second in Africa in the latest World Bank Ease of Doing Business report. Second in Africa to receive the highest number of international conferences and meetings ranks among the two in being secure while authorities have waived visa requirements and made it easy for travelers to visit Rwanda. In an email sent to RBA, Adelit Sabimana, technical advisor of Rwanda Finance Limited, expounds more on the purpose of this cooperation and expected benefits. Rwanda Finance Limited was created by the government of Rwanda to promote and develop Kigali as a regional business and financial hub through fostering cross-border and trade investment. The company advocates for the highest regulatory standards and the most attractive products and services to suit the needs of global investors and financial institutions. Among the primary projects this company is working on, includes developing and promote what is known as Kigali International Financial Center, KIFC, whose responsibility is to advocate for the highest regulatory standard to suit the need of global investors and increase capacities where necessary. One of the expected benefits of this project is to increase the contribution of financial institutions to the national GDP to 10% in the next 10 years increasing employment opportunities for the Rwandans in the financial sector and also increase foreign direct investment and reduce loan interest rates. Analysts say that for Rwanda to benefit from this initiative, regulations and policies have to be further streamlined to facilitate the company to attract global investors and big financial institutions. Having a financial center means that money will be kept here. Uh, that means growth of financial markets in Rwanda, which will benefit the country and the region in terms of investment and skills development in the service sector. If a small country like Mauritius can attract financial services from big multinational corporations, we too should be aiming for that, uh, to have headquarters of big financial institutions. Uh, there is a growing trend uh, of what is called dirty money around the world. That is why Rwanda needs standard regulations to avert that unlawful trade. Investors should be vetted to ensure transparency. Rwanda 
On Wednesday, November 11, the cabinet appointed a seven-member board of Rwanda Finance Limited, led by Tijan Tiam, a renowned Ivorian banker, who is the immediate former chief executive officer of the Swiss bank Credit Suisse. Other members of the board include Luis Kanyonga, Diko Jacob Mukete, Alice Namitondero, Diban Solem Abdi, Umuringa Karangwa, and Julian Kavaruganda. Moving on, people with disabilities in Rubavu district that didn't cross border trade had been out of job for more than seven months due to COVID-19 pandemic. But they're now happy with the results they're seeing in the past two weeks following the resumption of their business activities. However, the only remaining challenge faced by these small scale traders is the high cost of COVID-19 tasks they are asked to incur before resuming their work, they say. Innocent Mugabo has the details. Tawjen Hakizimana, a cross-border trader, and his colleague Habarure Maevalist are both disabled and work in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Their business is affiliated to the Kotraru Cooperative. They are happy with their cross-border work, which has been recently resumed after more than seven months of standstill due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has also heavily impacted their standards of living. <laughs> We lived a bad life during that period, but we now work and get something to take back home. We no longer sit home and wait for assistance from anyone. Even though things haven't worked out as before, but at least we are able to feed our families. These Kotraru members say they are also considering continuing to protect themselves in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Though it is the case, people with disabilities are worried about rumors that they will be required to pay 50,000 Rwandan francs for the COVID-19 test and this suggests that it remains free as before because they are incapable to cover the amount. 11 days have elapsed, having been given free COVID-19 tests. But there are also rumors that the next phase will be required to pay for the tests. But the truth is that we, as the people with disabilities, we haven't reached that capacity. Concerning this matter, Dr. Oras Tuganeyezu, the director of Jiseni CSP Hospital, says that although there are a few COVID-19 testing instruments, about 150 people would be provided with free COVID-19 testing on the Rwandan side and 50 on the Congolese side in order to continue to help them do their businesses. There are testing instruments like the rapid tests that became few, but others are still available. And concerning the 200 people that we will give free COVID-19 testing, this will be selected by the district, which will also work with the private sector, considering only those that have something important for their movements in line with avoiding unnecessary movements. The Private Sector Federation PSF President in Rubavo District, Kayumba Nyota Janet, says that selecting 19 people who will be given free COVID-19 tests will consider half of those with disabilities because they also engage in cross-border businesses. The Kotraru Cooperative has 132 members that deal in cross-border businesses between Jiseni and Goma in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Innocent Mugabo, RTV News. Thank you, Innocent, for that report. Rwanda Medical Supplies have been on the rise following the establishment of Rwanda Medical Supplies Limited. Health workers and health centers and hospitals are now able to provide medication for patients without them having to go elsewhere to look for medicine. Sergeant Ori has the details. At the Jihogwe Health Center in Gasabo District, patients are prescribed medication and are able to buy it right away at the health center's pharmacy. And they gave me medicine he's supposed to take every six hours and another type he will drink before he goes to bed. He's also not supposed to drink milk while taking the medicine. The doctor gives confidence that your child will get well again. Health centers like Jihogwe's are supplied medicines by former district pharmacies like the one in Gasabo district that spends up to 1 billion Rwandan francs to be able to restock their managers say getting paid for the medicines they provide, however, is not always straightforward. Uh, 
Every month we are required to supply the health centers with medicine, but the reimbursements are always late. We even have areas from the old system of Mituel de Sante that the health centers still owe us, and even RSSB can spend up to four months without paying us following their takeover of Mituel. Resupplying our stocks can therefore be difficult because we can only buy with the money we had and the health centers in turn suffer when supplies dwindle. Last month's report indicated that they owed us more than half a billion on the francs. To address this issue, Rwanda Medical Supply Limited was created from what used to be the Medical Procurement and Production Division at the Rwanda Biomedical Center. RMS then absorbed all district pharmacies that used to be independent establishments. Medicines were going to waste when the MPPD was still functioning. Other district pharmacies, even at hospitals, a lot of money was being lost. Some pharmacies were overstocked and medicines were expiring, while others did not have all the medicines they needed. What we do now is coordinate and take medicines where they are needed the most. We can tell who has what. RMS officials are also working to reduce the time it takes to import medicine by going directly to international suppliers. The company can spend up to 25 billion on the francs annually on essential medicines, not counting other regular medicines and equipment that cost much more. Since its establishment in August this year, RMS has raised medicine supplies from 49 to close to 70 percent of requirements, with medicine to deal with TB cases and antiretroviral drugs that are supplied free of charge, meeting 100 percent of demand requirements. One challenge that has remained is that the most important medicines are imported, save for morphine that is produced right here in Rwanda. Hospitals and health centers currently owe the company more than 12 billion on the francs and talks have continued on how they can pay the debt. In other news, a three-month campaign to promote hygiene was launched in Gasabo and Nyarujinji districts this Wednesday. The Minister of Local Government, Professor Shaka Anastas, has been commending the role of uh, residents in this initiative. Martina Abera has this report. In Nyarujinji district, the campaign was launched in Nyabugogo swamp. Bottles, bags and other debris that were brought in by the floods were cleaned out. Nyarujinji Deputy District Executive Director Njutira Guma Esperance says the swamp in Mohima sector is among the worst affected. It is a crowded sector where people come to shop and have a lot of business. Especially in Nyabugogo, during the rainy season, there is a lot of waste that is brought by the rain and you find that it has clogged up the area causing floods. So we started the campaign here to show the residents that it's important that we take care of the environment so that we can have a clean city in Nyarujanje. In Gasabo district, the campaign was called Gasabo Icheye. Motorcycles were provided that will be used by the security guards at the cell level. Bicycles will be given to the leaders of the village who have been outstanding. The district's executive director, Umwali Pauline, says this will help them solve problems quickly. Normally, someone solves a problem because they have it. We realized that we have hygiene problems all over our sector, which made it necessary for us to buy these motorcycles and bicycles so that wherever we think the problem is or where we heard it, we can get there as soon as possible. The Minister of Local Government, Professor Shaka Anastas, praised the way in which these residents are finding solutions and that they can set a good example for others. It is a project that was started by the residents. They themselves, together with their leaders, are the ones who came up with it. It is an act that shows us that finding solutions in Rwanda is not only words that are spoken and it's not something very high maintenance because the residents were able to come together to achieve it. The fact that every cell in Gasabo will have a motorcycle and help with various activities, every village with a bicycle that supports in various activities, it's a big step in strengthening those institutions, but it is also something that shows confidence in the people that they are capable. We want this activity to continue and spread all over the city and around the districts to see what they take home and see if they can link it to its nature, community, capacity and the issues they want to address.
nibyo bifuza nibazo bifuza gukemura The Minister of Local Government also demanded that the donated materials be used for the intended purpose instead of the benefits of an individual Martina Abera RTV News in other news, for the fourth time, Bank of Kigadi has issued interest-free loans to accelerate business development in Rwanda. The BK Urmori winners were announced on Tuesday in an event attended by officials, including those from the Ministry of Trade and Industry, local entrepreneurs, among others. BK Urmori Initiative is an annual entrepreneurial competition that aims at supporting local SMEs to access interest-free loans and intensive business training as part of the bank's corporate social responsibility. Our plans for next year is also based on the need, what we see in the market. So in the past we've done young entrepreneurs, technology entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs. So when we start this up again next year, it will be based on what we see is needed. Um, and at Enhomoko, we are always committed to doing more if possible. And in the past, in Homoko and Bank of Kigali have changed the number of winners. We've changed the amount of loans based on the need. So we're excited to see what the market, what the market needs next year and to be able to contribute as we can. On behalf of the entire news production team, many thanks for joining us here on Honda TV News. Please do stay tuned in. I will also remind you to stay safe and clean wherever you are. Wash your hands as many times as possible. Sanitize, uh, so practice social distancing. Because COVID-19 is still here. You need to be safe. I'm Ethan Tashavia. Bye for now.